It's a beautiful spring morning here in Harrodsburg, Kentucky. And why am I back here? Doug Sewell with Sewell Motor Coach asked me to come back out and do some inspections for him. And who could say no to this? It's so much better than the snowy uh, mess it was last time I was here. And while he did overwhelm me with the amount of inspections he wants me to do, I did take a break to make a video on something I think is very special I wanted to share with you guys because ever since I did my video on my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder, I've gotten endless uh, requests and comments and emails about finding an RV of similar quality and lineage as mine. And here it is. I'm just finishing up the inspection on this 2003 Allure from Country Coach. Which they're calling the which they're calling the first Avenue edition, and I'm struck with how similar, if not improved, it is to my beloved Patriot. And while this country coach is only 36 feet long instead of 40 feet like mine, and only has a paltry 400 horsepower Cummins ISL engine in it, sadly, I think it's a little bit better than mine on a lot of issues. Now, while I could point out it is on a Dynamax chassis, which I think is better than the Magnum chassis. And also has much bigger tires than mine. These are 315s. Though they are sadly all due for a replacement as the 31st week of 2015. The paint color and graphics are in wonderful condition. And I think a little bit more timeless than mine. There's just, just a little bit of checking in the black paint right there. Otherwise, beautiful mirrored glass appearance on it. Now, not only does this Allure have two slide outs like my motorhome, both on the driver's side. Meaning that your patio side or entry door side is completely open with easy access to all the basement storage here. With uh, unlike mine, a completely pass through basement storage with slider. With a second one for good measure. Which is great because that means you don't have to bend over and hit your head on top of the slide out room above your head like most modern RVs. With no slide out on the passenger side, that means you get full use of your patio. And I mean full use because just like mine, it does cover from the front door all the way to the back of the patio here. You have rain and sun protection the full length of your patio without having to walk around the slide out room. Or awkwardly transition from a patio awning to a small little entry door awning that doesn't really cover where you need it to be. Now also like my RV, they put the Onan diesel generator right here underneath the slide out room. Now, admittedly, this one is better than mine, though. So let me go ahead and take you inside, and you guys can see what I mean when I call this something of an upgraded clone of my RV, and why I wanted to share it with you guys. But I'm excited to take you guys inside because I don't want to say I'm jealous, but they did do a lot of things I'm envious of, or things that I would like to do. Now, as much as it might pain me to admit it, this might be a lot better than my RV. And it's not just because it's two years newer. It's because Country Coach basically cloned my Beaver Patriot floor plan, but improved upon it. But it doesn't hurt that the current owner and the previous owner took good care of it and did a lot of important upgrades that I kind of agree with. As always, I'll start right here with the passengers and driver's seats. There's not a thing wrong with the upholstery on these, and these are quite comfortable. When it comes to the steering wheel, this has a true smart wheel on it that I'm kind of jealous about. Nothing you have to worry about over here for wiper controls or cruise control. Now, just like mine, this does have an analog dash cluster on it. You can see it has 87,000 miles on it. However, unlike mine, it doesn't have a digital uh, chassis interface with a silver leaf display on it. But if we look underneath the dash right there, there's a uh, connection point to the OBD. And the current owner has a uh, tablet hooked up to it so you can get all that digital information driving down the road anyways. They've also provided a Garmin uh, RV GPS tablet, which I'm kind of jealous that I don't have. And similar to me, they did upgrade the dash radio to a great big huge touch screen on it with Bluetooth connectivity and hands-free calling. And if I'm gonna be jealous again, this does have automatic air leveling from HWH, not the frame levelers that I have stuck with on my Beaver Patriot Thunder. I'm pretty jealous of uh, a reliable leveling system like that. If there's any real takeaways of things that I think my RV improves upon is this cup holder is trash. The park brake console did get damaged 
by people yanking on that so the plastic is cracked right there. It's a common problem on a lot of RVs. And while the dash is a nice soft plush with beautiful stitching on it, my curtains are a lot better than these curtains. But the curtains are kind of inconsequential when it comes to uh, the cabinet space above the driver's seat here. I could not be more jealous than what the uh, previous owner did have performed. You can see a small little repair in the ceiling right here because I will assume in 2003 there was a CRT tube TV located on the angle right there just like my RV has. Now rather than just taking out the tube TV and putting a small flat screen TV on the front right here like I have, they redid this entire cabinetry. Which did two things. One, you don't have to worry about hitting your head getting in and out of the driver's seat on the cabinet above and you can put a much bigger and modern TV right there. Now while for my opinion I'm not a big fan of Sony's user interface, that's a beautiful TV installation. The cabinetry all the way around the front you'd have no idea it was redone. It's only this telltale sign right there that kind of gives away the game. And the improvements don't end right there with the uh, TV. The passenger seat also has its own dash AC zone and temperature control. And if we continue over here to the right above the front door just like on mine is going to be the monitor panel where you have most of the controls for the RV. Including right next to it, we do have the entertainment center. Which again, is the same location on all my RV. Now I know jealousy is not the best way to live your life, but I do think the one thing that's an improvement for my taste is that even though this is real solid wood, and it is solid, but this is oak unlike the cherry wood that you'll find in my Beaver Patriot Thunder. But every cabinet door, drawer face, cabinet face, molding, and trim is all that same solid hardwood. But as we go further back into the salon area, we'll find the first slide out. Now this is just one slide out in the front area. And this is an improvement over my RV too, because this is an HWH slide out. And it's very reliable. The sofa's in the exact same position as mine. This is just a jackknife sofa. The fabric is in pretty good condition. These are a little bit uncomfortable. If you do want to use it for sleeping, you might want to upgrade this. And of course, naturally, all the shades are going to be manual day-night shades. But you know how much I love that. Moving further back will be the galley area. Very similar to mine, except mine wraps around right there with a microwave uh, facing forward toward the driver area. Otherwise, solid surface Corian countertop right here. Three burner propane stove top with a convection of a microwave right above. If we go ahead and peer back over here, it does look like the uh, backsplash has been modernized a little bit by mine, but this is uh, just a stick on vinyl. They didn't even take off the bezeled mirror that was behind it on the backsplash already. They just went ahead and went over the top. It's kind of a clever solution and easy to resort back to or change out if you wanted to. Another nice upgrade that I don't have on mine that I kind of wish I did have was an asymmetrical under countertop mounted stainless steel sink. You know how much I like to have additional countertop space with a small working sink if I needed to. And they did the same upgrade with a single fat handle faucet. It's an upgrade that the new owner doesn't have to worry about either. Now if you look at all the lighting above or on the walls, these are all LED lights that have replaced the tube lights, including the LED lights and the reading lights above and the wall lights below. Well, I know on video, those LEDs look like they're flashing. These are high quality LEDs, and it's a huge upgrade that the new owner won't have to worry about doing. That makes the batteries last longer. Now, just opposing that slide out room, uh, the comparisons to my RV are very similar. So there's no slide out on this side. Now, on my RV, I don't have a full desk height, uh, little countertop work area right here. It's only about that high. Now, I know I don't want to be jealous of everything, but uh, I do kind of like this better for livability. While the full length of windows driving down the road is pretty nice when it comes to actual living in the RV, having a desk height right there for the recliner, which I have the same Euro recliner setup right here. I'm a little bit jealous of that. I even like how they put a remote caddy in right there. That's much more useful than mine. Now, speaking of being a little bit more useful, if you look above, they notched out right above the recliner right here for a little bit of a display case. That also means when you're stepping in or out of the re Euro recliner, you're not hitting your head on the cabinetry. And it also gives a little bit more of a architectural feel into the design of the cabinetry. Now, just like mine, moving right past that recliner, you'll find the 
table. Now this is not a freestanding table like mine. I am jealous that it is mounted to the wall. If you look at the wall right here, again, this is solid oak wainscoting. If you look right above, there is some damage to the wallpaper. Now that's not water damage. Likely that wallpaper just got pulled off by the wainscoting down below and they just glued it back on. Now, why do I like this table more than mine? Well, there's not a table leg that's getting in the way of the seats when you get in and out. That's kind of a hassle for me. And then putting a rug down, the table legs and the seats get out of the way, get in the way too. Now, another thing I do like are when the owners do simple solutions, because I like simple solutions. So they mounted a 110 uh, power strip with USB charger just on the wall to a plug right there. This does make this a very usable desk and work area. Now the table does extend out and there is a, another leaf in the closet to extend this out for additional seating. Then another clever upgrade is gonna be right here. They added a very simple wedge block right behind the thermostat so you can read it. And it's kind of so brilliant that I kind of wish I would have thought about that. Otherwise, you kind of have to stand on your tippy toes to look at it straight on because it's an LCD screen. So, again, pretty brilliant. Now, some other important takeaways from here is all these are rocker switches for the light switches. This is before Country Coach went with the uh, multiplex system. And they did a pretty good job of putting the switches where you think they should be. Another important thing to see is right here on the ceiling, AC silencers. I've added these to mine too. I have found them help a little bit. Not a lot, but it's still... A little bit's quite a bit when you're running the AC. You go ahead and turn this on to high. So that's the sound of it. You can have a pretty easy conversation with other people in the room without yelling, or you can even watch TV without having the TV maxed out. So they've already done that upgrade for you too. A lot of uh, modern manufacturers are still struggling of making the AC quieter. and. This is already pretty quiet. Another nice feature is this does have hydronic heat with the aqua hot system on it. But speaking of HVAC, that does bring me to the biggest elephant in the room. This is ceramic tile through the entire RV. And it's not just ceramic tile. This is heated ceramic tile. So there is electric floor heat underneath all this tile from front to back from the factory as an option. It's still working, and just floor heat by itself is keeping the RV completely warm. And again, I'm not jealous, but oh my gosh, I'm actually really jealous about that. Just behind that will be the RV refrigerator from Dometic. It is a side-by-side -side with freezer and ice maker. Now, because it's an RV refrigerator, it runs on propane and 110 power, and it's working flawlessly all these years later. And while I do like residential refrigerators, this is probably one of the best uh, RV refrigerators that was ever made. I do like those. Moving past right here, this is a solid wood pocket door with a very nice travel lock right down there. Now back here in the bathroom is where the similarity to my RV deviates a little bit, but it's only because it's flipped. And I am both jealous and not jealous at the same time. So over here is going to be where the shower is. Now this is a one piece seamless fiberglass shower surround. It does have a skylight with a diffuser right above, and it does have a tub down here below. Uh, it's a smaller shower than mine, and of course, because it is a tub, it has a pretty big step up right there. Now again, I'm six foot. Uh, yeah, I don't even have to duck. My hair's not even hitting. So it is a little bit tighter of a space in here than my RV, but otherwise it's a very functional and useful residential size shower. So I think my larger shower is a little bit better than this shower setup, but over here is where I'm jealous. The water closet is much bigger than mine. You have a lot more space around this more modern porcelain toilet and the countertop space inside the bathroom can't be beat. We have uh, the upgraded vinyl sticker backsplash over the mirrors, but the um, Medicine cabinets above are very nice. And I'm even a fan of the uh, porcelain sink that they have here. Only thing I'd upgrade would be the faucet because I like the single handle faucets. Now, even though I tell everybody how much I love the unique floor plan and the look of my bathroom, because it is so open all the way to the bedroom, it's not very functional. I do like having the pocket door to the bedroom to close off the entire bathroom. You can close off the water closet here. And then with this pocket door closed right there, 
you really do have a functional bathroom with a lot more privacy than, than uh, you're gonna feel in my RV. But otherwise, I still have the same adjustable shelving right here. The only difference is on my RV, because it's 40 feet long, uh, this is where the washer dryer combo would go. But really, when I lay down in my bed, on my RV, I do wish I had a lot more privacy in the bedroom like this one has. Now you can see we switched from uh, the ceramic tile from the front area to uh, a nice plush carpet here in the bedroom where I do like having carpet. This is a queen size bed and this is gonna be the second slide out right here. Now there is no storage or lift underneath the bed on this one and just like mine, there is a little bit of a trip hazard through the engine compartment over here. There are manual day night shades on the headboard and the cabinetry does extend over the bed a little bit more than mine, but otherwise, very useful bed area. If we look above, they've installed the AC silencer here on that bedroom AC, and they've come up with a very similar solution to my RV. That is to say, they installed a flat screen TV. Can pull this out, get access to where the tube TV would have been, and install the nice sound bar above. I even like how they mounted the Blu-ray player. Very easy access. Right above, nice cabinetry. The only thing I would find lacking in this entire floor plan is that this is all open right there. I would have liked to have seen some sort of a countertop like I have or for a desk area where you could put a chair to actually work this area as a desk. This is where the uh, washer dryer combo would go on this RV. And just to the right of that, this has two full length mirror sliding closet doors, which are an improvement on my four small closet doors. You can see the countertop extension right there. And this is a pretty decent closet space here. But thanks for joining me on this tour of this 2003 Country Coach Allure. While I do love my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder, this has a lot of more improvements over my RV than I think I'm comfortable admitting. And because I get so many comments and emails asking to find an RV very similar to mine, it was just a no-brainer to share this 2003 Allure with you guys because this is what you're looking for. You've asked me to find one for you, and I found basically an improvement on my RV. So when I did the inspection for Doug Sewell at Sewell Motor Coach here in Harrodsburg, Kentucky, I knew how to share it with you guys. But I know what you're also asking. How does the roof look? It looks good. There's a one-piece, seamless, gel coat fiberglass roof. It's incredibly strong been well maintained I didn't really find anything wrong with it other than a little bit of peeling paint on the front cap the ceilings all in great condition and it's seamless because there's no transition between the rear cap and the front cap here it's about as perfect as the roof can get and unless you're getting a Prevo bus you're not gonna find a better roof on a modern RV now, did I forget to mention, Country Coach even built a better slide out than Beaver did. Not only are the HWH slide out rooms and the bedroom slide comes out much more than mine, but just like my motor home or a beautiful uh, Prevo bus conversion, where the slide out sit flush to the sidewall. So too do the slide outs fit flush on this country coach. The fact that modern RVs still can't do this is mind boggling to me. And yes, just like my RV, with both slide out rooms in, this is still a very usable floor plan. You don't have to have the slide out rooms in to enjoy it or use it. The only difficult part's gonna be if you want to get to the closet back there, you will have to hop over the bed, but you can still lay in the bed just fine and watch TV. And otherwise use the entire RV, including the bathroom and the galley, without the slide-out rooms being out. Which is perfect for overnight stays in a parking lot or boondocking. Or mooch docking in the driveway of a friend or family. So yet another great reason to buy this 2003 Country Coach Allure First Avenue Edition. And I think Doug Sewell over here at Sewell Motor Coach in Harrisburg, Kentucky is only asking $89,000 for it. It seems like a heck of a deal. But thanks a lot for watching, guys. I hope that helped. I found a nice one for you. I swear, I'm always looking. Bye. I'm not telling you to rush or that I'm going to buy this, but I don't think this is going to last very long. It's too good. 
it. But that was uh, the tour of this 2003 uh, lure. And even on, even though I think my doors are a little bit better than this, 